Welcome back. And now Devin Wilson takes a look at one sorority's recent philanthropy event. The 5 Mu sorority held a fundraiser labeled Pizza Palooza, which raised money for the Philanthropy Children's Miracle Network. Pizza Palooza went amazingly well. For those of you who don't know, Pizza Palooza is our annual fundraiser for Children's Miracle Network, where we get local companies like Wheat State, Mr. Goodsense, CC's, Buzzards to donate pizzas for free, and then we sell tickets for $5, and we give all the money to Children's Miracle Network. We've raised a little over $630 for Children's Miracle Network this time, so that was a great success to me as philanthropy chair. This was my first year, so I was a little nervous. Laura Snyder tells us about the success and what she thought about the overall turnout of the fundraiser and the support of Brett Ballard and the basketball team. I think it went a lot better than last year. We made under 500 this last year, and for our second one, we made $625, which is better than both the philanthropy events we've had in the past year. We had quite a turnout with the support of the new coach, Brett Ballard, and the basketball team, so thank you to them for coming out. The overall turnout for the Pizza Palooza was a great one, and for an even better cause for the Children's Miracle Network and hopefully we'll keep up in years to come. This has been Devin Wilson, KNBU-TV. Thanks for that, Devin. And now I'm going to send it to Alex Giroldi and Patrick Merch, who are on location for Sports Chat. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Sports Chat. We're at the newly renovated Listom Stadium. I'm Alex Giroldi. And I'm Patrick Merch. To kick things off this week, I'm going to talk about Track, who performed last weekend at the KU Relays, and they came out huge. Taylor Nall and Mary Loveland contributed in the steeplechase, as well as the men's 4x100 relay team. Aaron Hannon also had an amazing performance Thursday when he became the first Baker athlete to take home the decathlon trophy. He accumulated over 6,948 points in 10 events. That helped him snag the trophy. His outstanding performance also won him the Hack Athlete of the Week. I thought it was going to be a fun meet. Like I knew there was going to be lots of competition and uh, big time competition. And uh, mentally just getting ready and go have fun and drop a big score is what I wanted to do. and then. Going into it, I was really excited and uh, just started out real well and finished it out. So a big congratulations to Aaron and we wish him the best of luck with the rest of his track season. So Patrick, can you tell me a little bit about baseball? Well, this past weekend, the Baker baseball team played against William Jewell both in Baldwin City and Liberty, Missouri. And in the first game, Baker won 8-4 to four with sophomore Chris Cummings pitching his fourth complete game and improving to 5-1 and one on the year. Offensively, Dustin Mumaw went 3 for 4 with 4 RBIs. Now in the second game, the Wildcats weren't as lucky and they lost 9 to 3. That brings the Wildcats record to 14 and 18 overall and 10 and 11 in conference. Now Alex, what can you tell us about the golf teams? Well, starting off with the women's golf team, despite illnesses, they were able to grab 5th place at the Park Invitational last week. Sophomore Stacy Yall led the Wildcats shooting an 84 on the first day and 83 on the second day despite really windy conditions. Results weren't available at taping time for the Wildcats' third tournament, which was hosted on Wednesday the 21st at the Alvamar Golf Course in Lawrence, Kansas. The men also will be playing there, and results will be available on next week's show. All right, now Patrick, can you tell me about the Lady Wildcats softball team? Uh, yes, I can. This upcoming week they have a game that will determine whether they get into the playoffs or not. And if they get in, it'll be the first time in, in four years that they have made the playoffs. They will be playing Central Methodist University, and they're conference record is 6-12. and 12. However, Heather Gruber has been pitching very well and she looks to pitch again against Central Methodist. And she has 13 wins on the year with a 3.3 ERA. And hopefully the softball team will come away with the win and we will be able to follow them throughout the playoffs. Now Alex, what can you tell us about the Baker tennis team? Well, on the women's side, junior Molly Flanagan and freshman Lauren Thames helped the Wildcats grab victories over Lindenwood this past weekend in St. Louis, Missouri. On the men's side, they unfortunately fell to William Jewell, who sits 7-2 and two on the season, but the doubles pair Drew Richter and Stephen Donnelly paired up to gain a win against the Cardinals this past week. They also played in St. Louis this past weekend, but results weren't available at taping time. On the other hand, the soccer team, both teams ended up having a great performance. 
The women, we played Emporia this past Saturday and dominated them 4-1. It was a really rough game all the way throughout, but we are excited that we grabbed a win against the Hornets, and we are excited that we beat them by two more goals than we did last year. The men also had a great showing this weekend when they defeated the Drake Bulldogs 1-1. The Drake Bulldogs are actually ranked top 10 in the NCAA, so a big congratulations to the guys team for tying an excellent team and showing them that they were just as good. So it seems like all the teams are doing very well this year and we wish them the best of luck. And this does it for this week's edition of Sports Chat. I'm Patrick Merch. And I'm Alex Sheraldi. See you next week. Thanks for that, Alex and Patrick. Before we wrap up the show, I want to remind you about Sigma Phi Epsilon's spiking out this Saturday. And then after that, be sure to go to the cafeteria where softball is having their spaghetti dinner. I'm Chris Satlaxon. See you next week.